and I'm the director of marketing here at Meals on Wheels Central Texas. I'm really excited to be um, helping facilitate this Get to Know Us Thursday. It's a brand new series that we uh, started last week, so this is the second installment, and we're just um, virtually introducing people to our programs and allowing people to have the opportunity to meet our program managers and ask any questions that they have about our programs. Um, so for now, if you could just um, mute yourself and if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, we will be uh, taking the questions throughout this and if we run out of time, we will make sure to follow up with you afterwards. So I'm going to hand it over to Nora Salinas, who is Hi. the program manager of Groceries to Go and Hope. So we're talking about two different programs today. So if you'll tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to Meals on Wheels, Central Texas. Sure, so um, it's very nice to meet all of you. First of all, thanks for joining. Um, I'm really happy to be able to talk about the programs that I manage here at Meals on Wheels today. Um, I've been at Meals on Wheels um, almost eight years now. Um, it'll be eight years in November. Um, and actually started um, just as a part-time employee. Um, I'm a single mom and I was looking for an opportunity to work somewhere that worked with my daughter's schedule. And so I started up actually as a driver um, delivering meals, one of our staff drivers that um, delivers meals every day um, and just immediately fell in love with the organization and our clients and our mission um, and uh, just was really eager to, you know, move forward and do whatever I could with the organization. And so very quickly about, well, about a year later, I moved into the volunteer services department and um, was full-time doing admin work, um, managing volunteers and um, regular meal delivery um, that we do Monday through Friday. And um, then about a year and a half later, uh, the opportunity to manage these two um, and more programs came up. And I just, I jumped at the chance to do it because again, um, had just continually learned more about the organization and what it does and um, just fell in love with the mission. So that's, that's how I, I got to this position and I've been doing uh, managing these two programs for about five years now. That's awesome. Yeah, so for people who are just joining, um, can you re-say the program names and then kind of describe which e what each one does? Sure, so um, one program that I manage is um, called the HOPE program. Uh, that stands for Healthy Options Program for the Elderly. Um, it is a collaboration with the Central Texas Food Bank um, it was originally their program and they actually have smaller um, HOPE affiliations around the city and other counties, but ours is one of their largest. Um, for all of their other programs, the uh, clients have to go to a site, pick up a bag and, you know, go through all the registration thing there at the site. So in 2002, the food bank was trying to figure out how to reach those folks in the community that couldn't get to their sites. And that is exactly who we serve, you know, the homebound elderly disabled community. So it became a really good fit. And um, what it does is provides one bag of non-perishable shelf stable groceries once a month um, to those of our clients that are kind of most nutritionally at risk. There are some um, more stringent eligibility requirements for this program. There is an age requirement. Um, it's a, uh, 65, oh, I'm sorry, 55 or older. And there's also a kind of a more stringent income requirement to receive the extra bag. Um, but we know, you know, these are the folks that we know just aren't making it to the end of the month. Um, uh, and so really need the extra food. And it's about nine to 12 items every month. Um, we're talking about rice, beans, peanut butter, canned fruits and vegetables, dried fruits. Um, again, things that are just gonna sustain those folks throughout the month. Um, so that delivery happens. It happens just like regular meal delivery. We have volunteer, we have routes, um, client routes and volunteers that take the routes once a month. It's a regular monthly assignment. So um, it, it runs very smoothly. And we've been able in the last, since I took the program um, in about five years ago, we were serving 350, 400 clients and now we're pushing 650. So we've been able to expand the program. Um, and uh, you know, it's a, it's pretty cut and dry, very simple. Um, 
again, just the once a month on the second Saturday of every month, these clients get that bag of groceries. So. Yeah, that's awesome. And then groceries to go is a separate program. Right. Separate so, clients. right. Yeah. so the other program that I manage is called groceries to go. It's a um, program that provides volunteer shopping assistance um, for, uh, again, those of our clients that are most challenged with transportation. Um, so that most, you know, pretty much all of them are, are homebound clients. Um, and so this pairs a volunteer for a long-term commitment um, to the same client. Uh, they're matched with a client and they go either, well, currently they're going to the grocery store for the client. Um, typically outside of COVID, it was a program where if the client is able to go with the volunteer to the store, they could actually go with them to the grocery store and, um, you know, uh, two times a month, just help them with their grocery shopping. Um, it is a transportation and assistance service only. So, you know, the, the client is responsible for paying for the groceries. Um, the volunteer uh, either gets a, a right now what's happening is they're going and getting a list from the client, going to the store for them, coming back um, with their groceries and a receipt and so forth. Um, but the beauty of this program is really that um, ongoing, regular, long-term uh, commitment and relationship with the same volunteer. These are the, you know, the, the folks that are receiving the service are our most kind of isolated clients. And so the establishment of that relationship with a volunteer that they can um, be, you know, start to rely on and trust and um, just, it, it, it's a very different volunteer experience because the volunteer is spending a considerable amount of time with the client, especially when they were taking them to the store and, and so forth. Um, it's not just handing them a meal and checking in and, and saying, bye, this is an ongoing kind of relationship. And so that emotional um, and uh, social component, the emotional support and social component of that of, of this particular program, I think really sets it apart and is as much and is as important as the transportation and getting the groceries. I feel like so. Yeah, and I know we had a question on the last one, um, kind of about like how clients get referred to programs. So for yours, it's uh, can you kind of talk about that and uh, the case managers and how they I sure. guess refer to your programs. So, you know, the process is that the client is interested in getting Meals on Wheels services, so they call in, they go through an intake process. Once they're, you know, eligible to be a Meals on Wheels client, they are then given, assigned a case manager, and that case manager goes to their home and does an initial in-home assessment. Um, right now, these are, are happening virtually, of course, but um, it just gets a very thorough, clear picture of Pretty much all aspects of the client's life so you know financial situation medical history and current situation social supports what other agencies they may or may not be accessing um just a really clear picture of their situation and so based on all of that information that case manager is able to refer that client to whichever of our and more programs you know the more than a meal programs that they are eligible for. So that case manager says, you know, this person doesn't have a family member that can shop for them. They can't shop on their own. They're having to, you know, navigate cab service, ride service, metro access or whatever. And it's really restrictive. They're just having a real difficult time getting their groceries. And so then as long as they're eligible for the program, they send the referral to me. And at that point, you know, I check and, um, you know, it's. The hope process is pretty simple. They get referred and we pretty much are able to add them to the list. Um, the, the hope program ebbs and flows as you know, clients are closed. That's about how many referrals I get every month. So right now we don't have a wait list. They just kind of roll on and, and start receiving service. Groceries to go is a little more in depth. So when I get that referral, I actually call the client have a conversation with them just to, so I get a feel for, you know, their situation. I let them know about the program and how it's going to work. Um, then they go on a list of clients that are looking for volunteers. I send out that list um, a couple of times a month to all of the volunteers who have been trained and are ready to, to take a client. And um, they, you know, they get the list. If they see somebody that they think is going to be a good fit, um, they let me know. And then I, 
put them in contact with the client and um, kind of am the, the middleman to get the, the thing, you know, their schedule and the process going and until they're ready to go. And Grocers to Go is pretty independent once they get matched and it gets on a good schedule and a good flow. I check in with the volunteers, you know, every couple of months just to make sure everything's going well. But it's a, it's a very flexible program in that um, the volunteer and the client come up with when it happens, you know, where and all of those details that just whatever works best for them. So that's something that can happen on the weekends, in the evenings. It's, you know, so that program appeals to volunteers a lot of times who need that kind of flexibility. Um, so it, it's good that we, you know, I, I feel like across the board, Meals on Wheels has just about every volunteer opportunity that you can need. You know, if you want to do it once a month, you can do hope if you want flexibility. So yeah, anyway, I kind of went on a tangent, but that's how oh, they get referred. And that's, yeah, that's kind of the process. No, that was very informative. And we did have a question and it, it kind of rolls into my next question too, because we've had a lot of changes with COVID and one of those is volunteer recruitment. So we did have a question about, do we have currently a sufficient number of volunteers for these programs? And do some volunteers have multiple clients? That's probably more for the Groceries to Go program. Yeah. So, you know, as is the case with everybody, things are different right now. Um, uh, we have had some of our volunteer base for both programs that um, are actually in the high risk category, um, either because of age or underlying issues, whatever. So a small percentage have stepped back, but um, part of the, you know, the training process for both programs um, and we have regular volunteers and then we have a substitute pool. So like for HOPE, if you don't have a regular HOPE assignment, route assignment, you're automatically on the substitute list. So um, I've had great response in both programs from my substitute pool. Um, and it, you know, it works the same way for groceries to go until you find a good client that's a good fit for you, you're, just, you're on the sub list. And um, Typically for groceries to go, I don't have to use the substitutes quite so much, but I, you know, clearly for this situation, I, I am using the sub pool quite a bit more. Um, it, it's it, right now it's, it's ebbing and flowing. And, and as, you know, as things change, volunteers are more or less likely to want to, you know, um, have interaction. I've had, you know, it, it's kind of ebbed and flow. Our clients have been taken care of. We haven't had a shortage so such that, you know, it's affected the operation of the programs right now. But as we move forward, you know, um, we haven't been doing our ongoing trainings. Um, we're about to start online trainings um, for both Groceries to Go and Hope. So I'm anxious to start recruiting some new folks. Um, and like I said, the Hope program really hasn't skipped a beat as far as client participation and it continues to grow. So we'll, we'll need those. Um, with groceries to go, we've come in, we run into some snags with our protocol changes. And this is again, going into, and, and, and I hope that answered your question. We are continuing to look for volunteers for both programs and we'll start the online trainings um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, so if you're interested, we would love to have you and, and, you don't have to make a permanent commitment. You could just go into the substitute pool for both, either of those programs and participate as you like. Um, but for the Groceries to Go program, because of our, uh, you know, the social distancing mandates and things like that and keeping both the clients and the volunteers as safe as possible, we are no longer able to take the clients out of their home. So those clients that we're going with to the store with their volunteer, um, that they're not able to do that anymore and we've had to make some changes. Um, a lot of our clients use the Lone Star card, the SNAP card, so and they have to be present in order to use that card. So some of our clients have been affected by that. Um, they typically um, go with and now they, you know, they can't use their card. So we're, we're, we're working with our volunteers have really stepped up to try to help them navigate online ordering for those clients that are, you know, having difficulty because they have to use their snap card and 
just navigating the changes of, you know, not being able to take certain clients. And that has affected our enrollment as well a little bit because if your client has to use a SNAP card now, it's more difficult for them. But, you know, we're working through everything and um, getting as many people enrolled as we can and, and working through all those problems. Yeah, you've talked, so you've talked a lot about the, the COVID impact of groceries to go. Can you uh, kind of tell people about the HOPE program? I've been to the second Saturdays and I've seen like, you know, the new setup. So can you kind of talk about how that has changed? Sure, sure. I mean, how COVID has affected us. Again, a little bit of the volunteer issue has been, um, you know, we've addressed. Again, our sub pool is great, but our delivery and uh, our pickup and delivery protocols have had to change dramatically as well. Um, we are, um, yeah, we're doing curbside, just like we've changed with our regular meal delivery. Before we were all in a big room and everybody would come in and load up and help, you know. Now everyone has to stay in their car. Um, we have changed um, the, it actually is, is running very smoothly, um, the, the process that we've worked out um, for pickup and um, for delivery, they are uh, following the same protocols that regular meal delivery is, which is you um, were knocking on the client's door, setting the bag on the ground, stepping back six feet. Of course, everyone is wearing a mask, um, waiting for that client to answer the door, making eye contact, making sure that, you know, uh, it's a check-in on the client as well. Um, and then, you know, making sure that they get their bag. For the HOPE program, if the client is not there to receive their bag, um, the bag has to come back here to Meals on Wheels. The um, food bank likes to kind of keep tabs on where everything is going. So um, if the client's not there, we can't just leave the bag. So the volunteer is waiting, finding, you know, making sure that someone answers the door. And um, then if they're not there, they bring the bag, they let me know. So I have a list of those folks that weren't there and we follow up with them the next week and try to get the bag to them and figure out, you know, what was going on or whatever. But um, so again, we're, we're being very conscious in our pickup and the delivery of keeping the volunteers as safe as possible, of course, and the clients as well. Yeah, it's really incredible to see the whole like second Saturday operation and everything. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna ask you now, what's your favorite thing about your role with Meals on Wheels and um, what makes serving our community important to you? Well, um, I just, I feel like, you know, as a society in general, as a society in general, um, I feel it's important that we take care of each other um, and, you know, be aware of those folks in our community that that need extra help. And, um, you know, that's what Meals on Wheels, Meals on Wheels is all about. Um, it, you know, it is so much more than just the food, which is huge. I mean, that's a, that is, you know, of course, huge need. But through our um, More Than a Meal programs and just our incredible volunteer base, um, it's, it's the check-ins, it's, you know, making sure that our clients are okay. Um, and I just, and I feel like, especially these days, um, it's important for everyone to just do what you can to, to take care of your neighbor and those folks that are most in need. Yeah. Do you have a favorite client story or even a volunteer story or maybe something you could share with everyone? Well, sure. Um, uh, again, uh, for groceries to go specifically, um, you know, I don't have that much interaction with the actual client through hope. Um, I know it's, a, you know, a, a huge need. Um, a hope story would be, um, there was, a, a couple that were new to the program and didn't realize that if you weren't there, they wouldn't leave the bag. Um, and it was their, you know, their first time to receive the bag. And I, I stay here until 1.30 on that day to receive the bags that are being brought back, right? Um, and the folks had not been at their house and it had so counted on the food being there. They took a cab 
to Meals on Wheels to get their bag um, because they, they were counting on that food, um, not realizing that we would reach out to them and so forth. So, so that, you know, that just kind of shows you the impact of, of that, that one bag of food a month to some folks. Um, groceries to go, I have many stories. It's, again, it's all, it, the stories about gro from groceries to go have to do with the relationship really um, as much as anything. I, I have some, so we've been doing groceries to go for a really long time. It started in like 1994. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a, a volunteer that has been grocery shopping for the same client since 2000. So he's been shopping for this man for 20 years. Wow. Um, so clearly it's, you know, it's more than just a volunteer client relationship. It's an investment. These people are become like family to a lot of these volunteers. I have um, volunteers that have invited clients to their home for Thanksgiving because they're just part of the family. Um, one gentleman started shopping for his client and would take his young son with him when they would go. And it, again, that's another great thing about all these programs is that these are great things to do with your kids. Um, they are able to participate and, and do this right along. So he would bring his son and then his son went, got into high school and was doing volunteer service work and so would help out. And at some point the father just passed the baton to his son and now his son is shopping for the same client. So it's been like a familial thing um, that they do. Um, and, you know, I had, I had one client that um, he started shopping with uh, his volunteer would take him to the store and they would schedule time before they actually shopped. I think it was at a Randall's that had an, an adjacent Starbucks. And so they would schedule 30 minutes extra for them to go to this coffee shop before they shopped and they got to know all the employees and they got to know other regular customers. And so it, it created a community for this gentleman that had no one before. And so, you know, it really, uh, for those home parents, um, it was the world for them. They get, you know, theoretically, when we get back to normal, <laughs> they have the opportunity to get out into the world and, and establish relationships and things like that. So, yeah. And we did have a question, has second Saturday already occurred for August? Yes, it did. It was this past Saturday. And then the next date for um, September is 9-12. And I just checked my calendar and that appears to be correct. So, <laughs> right. Uh, yes. So um, I know you kind of touched on this because we're not, um, we're not actively recruiting, but you did mention that you are kind of taking on names. So is that the best way to help the program right now? It's just if people are interested to kind of reach out to you or are there other ways that people can help either program? Right, so if you're interested in volunteering for either program, um, I would say just, you know, through our website, you can reach me through my email, I guess, yeah. Um, and um, I, am, I have a list going of folks that have already expressed interest and we'll be reaching out to people kind of individually to let them know about when the training is going to happen and how to register It'll be just like this is zoom zoom training. Um, there is a process, um, you know, all of our meals on wheels volunteers have to fill out the application and um, submit a copy of your driver's license and um, car insurance for a background check before. So all of that will have to happen. I'll have to get the paperwork before um, But you can, you know, scan an email all that stuff to me before you actually register for the Zoom meeting. And then we'll have a Zoom training because it is, each program is kind of specific. And so um, we do ask that um, if you're gonna be volunteering that you watch the, the online uh, YouTube video that we have for just all of our volunteers in general. Um, and then the little Zoom meeting in addition for the specific programs. But yeah, if you email me, that's great. And um, both of these programs, um, you know, the, the HOPE program is a collaboration with the food bank, um, so does not uh, require additional costs, it's donated food. And the Groceries to Go program is also just, you know, it's just the volunteer service. Um, but, uh, you know, we are looking to help our Groceries to Go clients as well. So gift cards, things like that, you know, HEB gift cards, you know, 
name uh, earmarked for grocers to go clients is another good way to help that program. But yeah, yeah, that that's great to know too. Um, and we we will definitely be posting on social media and everything when recruitment starts opening up again. So anyone who's interested, just make sure to follow us online, and we will be blasting that a lot when that happens. Um, I have one last question. There might be another one that rolls in, but um, what is one important thing that you would like for people to take away with about um, Meals on Wheels Central Texas and your programs? Um, well, it's kind of what, what I hit on before, and that's that um, you know, a lot of people know about Meals on Wheels. That is a brand and people know that brand but um, I just would love for more people to know that we do so much more than, than just delivering the food, you know, Monday through Friday. Um, through my programs, uh, you know, and home repair, all those other things. I mean, it's just, it's important for us to get the message out that we are doing so much more than just that, uh, the, the nutrition piece. Yeah. That makes sense. Yes, of course. Well, uh, we are almost at time. So I just wanted to say thanks for spending time with all of us and talking about both of your programs. And uh, it's been really informative. Um, we are hosting these every single week. We have a different program. Our next one is on Mike's Place, which is our respite program. So our program manager for Mike's Place will be joining us. And if you want to join this uh, this programming or any of the other virtual events, we've added some other fun ones too. So if you go to our website, you can go to mealsonwheelscentraltexas.org and then under the get involved tab, there's an events tab. You just click on that and there's lots of events up right now. So we hope that you can um, join us for another one of these or anything else right now. I'll just say, do you have anything else you want to add, Nora? No, just thank you everyone for your interest and for, you know, taking the time to learn about us and everything that we do. And um, if anybody has any other questions that come up after the fact, don't hesitate to, you know, find my email address and um, reach out. And uh, if you are interested in volunteering, I will be in touch with you. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. We appreciate you spending time with us today. Thank you so much. It was nice to meet everyone. Thanks.